Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial money, investing, and more. Thanks for listening to the show. Another day, another dollar. Got through last week. Last week was kind of an interesting one. We had NVIDIA's big earnings on Wednesday. And we also had the Federal Reserve basically say, expect interest rates to stay higher longer. And we may raise interest rates. We may not. It's a very mixed message. Stocks are rising today. Focus is going to shift to inflation and jobs data. Interesting things, right? Sam Bankman freed. Has appealed the judge's decision to jail him. It is insane. We, uh, the way we look at criminals and their frauds, Elizabeth Holmes in jail for 10 years for essentially ripping off a billion dollars from rich people. Sam Bankman Freed steals billions and billions and billions of dollars from average people. Will he go to jail? Probably not. We'll see. Again, I, I think it's, uh, it's it's when you steal from the rich, the, the, the courts get against you. When you see what some CEOs have done with some dummy companies, um, Adam Newman, for instance, with the WeWork and the billions and billions and billions of dollars that he took and enriched himself and put in his pockets and walked away with. I don't know, but stocks are up big today. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice, but how nice is it? The Nasdaq's up 31% for the year. The SP 500's up 15.2% for the year. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 3.6% for the year. Investors weren't all that phased ultimately by Jerome Powell and his warning. But again, this week, we're going to look at inflation data, not listen to the words about inflation data. 10-year Treasury sits at 4.25%. How much higher can we go with the 10-year Treasury above 4 and now sitting at 4 and a quarter? Oil's up 4% for the year, sitting at 80 bucks a barrel. 44% of young adults between the ages of 19 and 30. And 28% of adults between 35 and 50 report using marijuana in the last 12 months. That's record high. And I'm not talking high. I'm talking that's a record high. It's an all-time high. And yet, when you take a look at investing in marijuana... There's still not really a good play. The number of American workers testing positive for marijuana hit a 25-year high last year as well. Quest Diagnostics does those tests. That seems to be the best play on marijuana at this point in time. Isn't that interesting? 44% of people between the age of 19 and 30 and 28% of 35 to 50. It's worthy of note. One of the big headlines out there, another hurricane could hit Florida. West Coast or East Coast, you ask? It's a good question. The West Coast of Florida, i.e. the Gulf side, the Gulf of Mexico, has oil wells in it. The East Coast of Florida has tall apartment buildings. So if it hits the East Coast, you think insurance companies... If it hits the West Coast, do you think higher price of oil of what can move on a short term? Bob Barker died. God said, come on down. And there goes Bob, 99 years old. I want to watch Happy Gilmore. Get this. I've never seen it. Came out at a time in my life where I had a job and I was working to create. I was an owner of a company, you know. I know you're saying, How have you never seen Happy Gilmore? I think Bob Barker beats up 
Happy Gilmore. Um, he had the show only give away American made cars during the Gulf War in 1991. So Bob Barker had kind of like this interesting brain behind him. He was an influential animal rights advocate. He banned fur coats as prizes. The Los Angeles PETA office is named the Bob Barker building. Pretty cool. I'm not that well thought of. No buildings named after me. If I can get KDOW, this radio station I work with, to name the state uh, the studio after me, I'd take it. Live from the Rob Black studio. It's not going to happen. September begins on Friday. Billy Joe Armstrong will take a nap. Think about that one for a few minutes, would you? What else do we have to hit? France is about to spend $216 million destroying nearly 80 million gallons of surplus wine. That's enough to fill 100 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The problem is, what's wrong with this wine? Uh, it's impossible for French wines to sell their spiked grape juice for a profit, even if it does have tantalizing hints of oak and leather. The average French citizen drinks about 40 liters of wine per year. That's compared to 136 liters in 1926. Man, 1926 must have been a fun time in France. Zillow is doing something that I don't know a lot about, about, but I'll figure out by the end of the day. They're saying we will pay 1% down payment on your loan to home buyers feeling squeezed by the affordability crisis. You need to buy a home, they'll give you 1% of your 100% purchase. There has to be some strings attached, right? SpaceX launched its 11th crewed mission. This one took four astronauts to the International Space Station. I wonder how much that Uber ride is, right? Because, you know, Elon Musk is going to tell NASA, hey, we, we brought some astronauts up here and, uh, oh, oh, it's peak pricing. Amazing that we can do that, isn't it? I have just Take an Uber to the space station. Fed Chairman Powell's speech at Jackson Hole Symposium was the center of the market's attention on Friday. Stocks first dipped and then they rose and they dipped again. Now, George Costanza from Seinfeld was okay with the double dip, but most people are not. It turns out that most people participated in Friday's market were not okay with the double dip and decided to buy on the second dip that took the S&P 500 to 43.56. So we're playing with some technical numbers right now on the back half of the year. I believe as we get closer to 2024, the Fed will, it'll be clear that they're done raising interest rates if they're not already. One. And we'll start focusing on when do they cut interest rates, which should be the next little bit of gasoline to throw on the SP 500 fire for moving higher. Some might point to a rash of stock market support measures in China as a negative. That includes a 50% cut in the stamp duty, a lower margin financing requirement, and restrictions on stock sales by large shareholders. That's not good. I don't like it when governments tell people how their stock market should run 30. and how their people should spend their cash and how their bank should lend. It's a little problematic. So what do we have? Personal income. Uh, we got a lot of economic data this week is what I was trying to get at. The employment situation report on Friday, manufacturing index, personal income, second estimate for GDP, Jolt's report. Find me online at robblackshow.com. Brought to you by EP Wealth. This is the Rob Black Show. Always interesting to see stupid stories come across your desk. $1 million ticket unclaimed in Iowa. Individual has two weeks before it expires. Someone in Iowa has two weeks to claim a million dollar Mega Millions prize. I, I can see that happening. People buying a ticket and then assuming they didn't win the big one and seeing that they didn't match one number and getting bummed out or something like that. It's kind of unfortunate. I'd like to see a good documentary on lottery, like a really, really good one. But I don't think we'll ever see it for some reason. I know you're saying 
you don't believe in UFOs, but you believe in conspiracy theories on, on lottos. I strangely do. Oh, GM pauses production of most pickups. That's interesting. Due to part shortages. It's not really specified what part it needs. The UAW is in negotiations with GM, Stellantis, and Ford as the contract the three have with the union will expire September 14. Labor unions are asking for higher wages for their employees, and they're mostly getting it. I would say that would be one of the stories of 2023 for sure. Let's talk a little bit more about Jerome Powell. He said Friday the central bank could raise interest rates further if the economy and job markets don't weaken more substantially, suggesting that additional rate hikes may lie ahead even if inflation continues to ease. Oh, is that what he said? He wants people to lose their jobs. Now, if I'm Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren, who are quite known for uh, their opinions, quite known for thinking the average man should get better paying jobs. I think they might be upset with him for saying we need people to lose their jobs. It's that Friday's jobs report. Bad news would be good news. Would good news be good news? Interesting, right? The economy grew at a stronger than expected 2.4% in the second quarter, and consumer demand has been surprisingly robust. So we know companies like MasterCard and Visa are benefiting from higher prices because they do the swipes on the credit cards. <clears throat> higher prices equal teeny tiny little percent that they got get goes higher but also volumes are, are are hanging out high so it's not just the inflation that's helping them but it's also the volume the fred fed reserve raised a key interest rate to a 22 year high to five and a quarter to five and a half percent i'm loving what my cash is doing in my emergency fund Loving it. It's getting a good return is what I'm trying to say. Powell noted that inflation has come down. He said it's still too high and the Fed may need to do more to lower it to the Fed's 2% goal. The Fed's preferred measure of annual inflation, which excludes volatile food and energy items, has fallen from 5.4% in February of 2022 to 4.3% in July. So we do have a ways to go. We're close, but it's the difference between three to two is is bigger than the difference between five to four. If you pick up what I'm putting down, the power of exponential growth, it's tougher when you're when you're dealing with low numbers. So we'll see what the Fed does. The everyone has an opinion. We're all backseat drivers. They're the ones that have the lever of action. Apple came out over the weekend, some data on Apple. I'm a shareholder of Apple. I disclose that to you for legal reasons. Um, the story may be a little biased. I, I don't think it is, but I have to throw it out there for you. The iPhone 14 was the most shipped smartphone in the first half of the year, reflecting a shift in consumer buying habits towards the most high-end devices on the market and away from low to mid-range phones. That's good news for Apple. Last year at this time when the Apple came out with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, they couldn't make enough of them. So people got frustrated. I was going to say flustered, but for some reason flustered didn't come out right. And it came out fra. So I, I went with the frustrated on the fly. And they went with a cheaper phone. Apple's iPhone 14 Pro Max shipped 26.5 million units between June January and June of this year. It compares to 21 million units for the iPhone 14 Pro. Basically, don't forget that the Pro and the Pro Max are the high-end versions. High-end means more storage, better cameras. Those two things mean better margins. Apple accounted for all four of the top shipping models with the iPhone 14 coming in third at 16.5 million and the iPhone 13 selling 15.5 million units. Last year, the iPhone 13 was the best selling device on the market, indicating consumers were still buying flagship devices, but at the entry level versus the pro versions, 
Apple's getting ready to fre- refresh their iPads and there's going to be an iPad Pro. And it's they've got a lot of levers that they can pull too to influence you with margins. Back to phones, sky high prices north of $1,000 attached to the top end phones from Apple, Samsung, and Xiaomi have also put people off buying flagship phones more generally. I'm definitely aging because I can tell you that in my 50s, I no longer want or need the newest phone. I've got a 13. Uh, My spouse has a 14 Pro, not the Pro Max. I think my son's got a 14. And none of us are like, can't wait for the new phone. I used to be that guy. I didn't you know. I didn't get them yearly, but I definitely followed the technology a lot closer than I am now, and the differences between all the models. Devices from Chinese phone manufacturers did not feature the top ten best selling smartphones. It should be a good quarter for Apple. Again, consult broker fires to take action on anything I ever mentioned on this shoe. Tropical storm Idalia is expected to become a hurricane and move towards Florida. Um, I do like the um, tracks that hurricanes take. Again, a sign that I'm getting older. Heavy rainfalls in western Cuba could produce flooding and landslides. Weather is expensive. Weather involves insurance. Weather involves oil, especially when it's on the Gulf. So if you ever take a look at Cuba, most people think Cuba is to the east of florida it's to the south of florida and the heavy rains have hit the westernmost tip telling you that it's in the gulf of mexico um interesting times no large parts of western coast of florida are at risk of seawater surging onto land and flooding communities when a tropical storm or hurricane approaches that part of florida is very vulnerable to storm surges um, and it's it's coming right at Tampa. It's coming right for Tampa, it looks like. I'm Rob Black. If you would like a complimentary portfolio review to see if you're on track for retirement, reach out to me, rob at robblackshow.com. It's rob at robblackshow.com. You are listening to the Rob Black Show podcast. For more information on EP Wealth, visit robblack.com. That's robblack.com. Who doesn't love a good chip and dip? I'm not talking about the football season starting out. Could though. That story is coming later in the couple next couple of weeks. But let's hit some um, I would say snack size stories on Wall Street. West Virginia's university, West Virginia University. Students are protesting after the school cut 9% of majors to fill a $45 million budget gap. Huh. Enrollment at West Virginia has fallen 10% since 2015, with total U.S. college enrollment dropping 8% from 2019 to 2022. I think that's pretty interesting. Um, West Virginia is a kind of a goofy little state. It's a lot of mountain. I used to live on the East Coast, and anytime you take a trip to see friends at the university, you're like, this is a very mountainous state. Tennessee as well. I know you're saying, thanks for the insight, Rob. I didn't need to know that today. But when you take a, when you drive through Tennessee, you're like, God, should it take that long to get from uh, Nashville to Memphis? And then you go up the mountains and the roads are never straight. It's mountain road after mountain road. But on a map, you're like, yeah, that doesn't look that far. So I think that's kind of a something very interesting. Uh, university enrollment down. Driverless cars from Waymo and Cruise are freely trucking people back and forth in San Francisco. And the new fire chief is freaked out about it. He's demanding some fixes. There's been some crashes. There's been some emergency vehicles slowing down to get to the scene of an accident because a robo taxi doesn't know what to do in that panicky situation. For the record, I don't know what to do sometimes. 
And that's a little bit of an exaggeration. I know you're supposed to get over, but sometimes it feels like, oh, I should speed up to get over. The U.S. Open begins today. I don't see anything there as far as in stores. Apple is suddenly backing the right to repair your own phone. Don't see much of a story there. Earnings expected this week from Best Buy, HP, and James Smucker. I see a little bit of something there. Best Buy, we've got um, a lot of semiconductors in that store. And we knew last quarter that Americans buying TVs and computers went down. Will that, can, will that trend stay in place? James Smuckers. I know you're saying, are you talking to the jam company, Rob Black? I'm talking to the jam company. Um, they have a lot of other product too, but they're a play on grocery stores. And that's a play on pandemic, not going to restaurants versus post pandemic going to restaurants, but slow in economy, not going to restaurants. It shows you how discretionary spend is. We'll find out on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we get Chewy dog food company <clears throat> that brings it to your house. Pretty cool company. They've got a nice touch. Like uh, they may oil paint your picture of your dog for you. And you're like, that's sweet. So Chewy comes out on Wednesday as does salesforce.com. Now that's a play on how many times can they say the word AI and are they cutting staff? Are the staff coming back to work? Wednesday, we get Victoria's Secret. Mm-hmm. Enchante. Um, I don't know what that tells us. I just wanted to crudely tie my name to Victoria's Secret. Mm-hmm. It was actually a pretty interesting trend in uh, the mid 2000s, 2010s, where young women didn't really want to support. Victoria's Secret, because they're like, we don't look like those Victoria's Secret angels. Can you please make clothing design for us? Thursday, we get the jobless claims and July's personal consumption expenditures. We get Broadcom, great semiconductor company. I don't say that enough on this show. We get Campbell Soup, again, a play on COVID trends of eating at home. Dollar General, oh, they were in the news for the wrong reason this week, right? Lulu Lemon. Lulu Lemon's kind of a, for the lack of a better word, a stylish poor man's Nike. Um, and it, it it sells very expensive yoga pants, and that that's called athleisure. I'm not wearing athleisure right now, but I get the concept. We get Polestar Automotive on Thursday, and I'm like, is that an electric vehicle company that I really don't care about? And the answer is yes. And Friday, we get the August U.S. unemployment numbers. All very, very interesting stuff to me. Maybe not to you. Let's talk about some other financial things that we could work with. Elon Musk took a ride over the weekend around Palo Alto trying to find Mark Zuckerberg's house. He was doing it in a self-driving Tesla. And he was trying to show off in the video of the full self-driving, and he wasn't editing it. In the past, they've edited the videos to either speed them up or slow them down whenever the has uh, the driving has a problem. It's kind of their little trick. Um, and during his ride to try to find Mark Zuckerberg's house, he Googled, where does Mark Zuckerberg live? And he felt that he could do that without kind of getting into trouble. But it is kind of weird that the CEO of a pretty powerful set of companies X, SpaceX, uh, Tesla, the Boring Company, the uh, what's the other one? Uh, Neuralink. Neuralink's going to make him money. SpaceX is going to make him a lot of money. If you think he's rich now, wait about three more years. Uh, he's got too much money. So his car performed well on the drive. Um, Musk had to take over at a stoplight where the car started to proceed straight on an advanced green for left turns. That, of course, means the system still needs driver supervision 100% of the time. 
I have to imagine he's going to get into a lawsuit with the attorney general at some point of some state. It's like, you can't call that full self-driving. Look at your own video. And he sells it for $10,000, $15,000 as an add-on. Anyhow, I think that's a cute little story. Here's one that I don't really like. Um, Jim Cramer came out over the weekend and, and wrote an article on seven things you shouldn't waste money on. I'm like, yeah, isn't he the hedge fund guy who, yeah, he's more of a hedge fund guy than he is a, a Susie Orman type. I'm not saying you can't get into this area, but um, he talks about expensive sports tickets. Keep in mind, he gets invited to luxury boxes. So he doesn't want to pay for an overpriced seat. Alcohol at restaurants he talks about. That one actually makes a little sense. And I we should throw that down there on occasion. Huge markup at restaurants is one of the reasons Kramer refuses to waste money on alcohol while dining out. Even though he's a restaurateur. Um, talked about not getting expensive hotel rooms. So even though I don't like the guy, generally speaking, I think he's positive for the overall market. But he's one of those people that made his name by, and he, he says this in his books, he would call CNBC and lie to Maria Bartiromo. He would say, you know, hey, I got bad news. Apple's quarter is looking awful. And the stock would go lower. He'd buy it because he knew that Apple's stock and the cell phone, iPhone 14 Max, was doing great. That's just a made up example. But Maria would go on air and go, I've got it from inside sources that Apple's not doing very well this quarter. It was just him manipulating the market. And he should go to jail for that admission. But again, for some reason, some classes of criminals don't get don't get prosecuted. And that's just, again, my opinion. I, some people would say, well, she was just a happy participant in the plan as well. Jeff Bezos is doing something really, really interesting. And I think we're going to end up hating Jeff Bezos. And again, isn't it interesting how we kind of have a love-hate relationship with Musk? Bezos backed companies surpasses $100 million in single-family home acquisitions, while the housing shortage in the United States worsens. Countless news headlines have been calling for a housing crash for the better part of a year. But prices are still climbing. Despite rising mortgage rates, buyers are finding a little relief in home prices because of the massive shortage of supply. Investors on the real estate platform that Jeff Bezos has started called Arrived Homes became the first company to legally sell shares of individual rental properties to non-accredited investors. So, so far, he's funded 294 single-family homes with a total value of over $109 million. I don't know how I feel about that. Institutions in the United States own more than 700,000 single family rentals. Um, and that number is expected to reach 7.6 million by 2030. How do you feel about institutions and billionaires buying homes and renting them out? It's not part of the American dream that I know, but am I upset by it? I don't have an opinion really yet, but I, I see that as an issue out there. Do you? You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube or Rob Black Show. Questions about Social Security? Check out the Social Security Retirement Guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. Thanks for listening to the show. Tying up some loose ends. Earlier in the show, I talked about West Virginia cutting $45 million out of its budget shortfall. And what I failed to really think about, and this was in my notes, West Virginia is a problematic state because there's not a lot going on there. Um, not a technology business innovation hub in any way, shape, or form. Uh, their coal is not worthless. It just leads to a lot of jobs that are, mm, I don't know, lackluster for imagination or something like that. So if you live in West Virginia or your parents live in West Virginia, you're faced with, do you want to be a coal miner or not? Or do you want to work in um, the industries that support coal? 
or you can join the military or you can go to college. So when a major college, the major college in that state says, you know, we're going to cut programs. Some of them I agree with, like, I don't know. They're cutting one program, uh, world languages, literature and linguistics, uh, German, Russian studies. I, I get why universities would re need to retool, but also I'm looking at, you know, do we need to really study Slavic and East European studies? I don't, again, I don't, I, I, some of the things we teach our kids, it's to me, can we stick with math and science um, or at least lean that way? So I don't know if I've, I wrapped up that story and I don't know if I got my point across. I think universities in the United States are problematic with bloat and with programs that have been built out. MSG Sphere, that crazy building. I'm going to go to see you two there later in the year. 70% of its energy outlay is going to be done with renewable energy. It's pretty interesting. It is a really cool building. If you get a chance, take a look at it on YouTube and don't necessarily fly there. But interesting note about flying there. I said, I'm going to see you two at the MSG Sphere in Las Vegas later this year. I'm not seeing them in my hometown. I'm going on a plane. I'm going to get a hotel room. Um, that's a big thing right now. Hospitality companies are expanding offerings to include event vacations. Um, we're not going to a white sanded beach for sleeping on the beach. We're going to an area to see a big event. For instance, Formula One. It's going to have its first ever stop in Vegas. That's going to be as big of a draw as the slot machines this year. The WWE last week sold 90,000 tickets to its WrestleMania 40 event. 90,000 tickets in Philadelphia. People are going to be flying into Philadelphia to see this event. Live Nation. Taylor Swift's recent L.A. shows boosted the city's GDP by $320 million. Beyonce's Renaissance Tour raised inflation in Sweden on skyrocketing Stockholm hotel prices. Hilton said this year it's already seen double as many loyalty points redeemed for experiences than last year. I wanted to say the video game, but it's, I'm, I'm wrong on this one. The HBO series, or the back series now, Game of Thrones... Um, led to tourist spending up 65% in Dubrovnik. Airbnb has expanded its, its experiences offerings where they're telling the host, hey, look, if you have a home in Puglia, Italy, make a relationship with a pasta maker and say, come learn pasta in Puglia, Italy. Hyatt rolled out an experience program featuring outings like foraging for truffles in Hungarian forests. Marriott has doubled down on its experience offering to drive loyalty, and American Airlines started letting loyalty members rack up points on event purchases. So we were locked down during the pandemic. Employers are calling us back to work. Travelers are making the most of their precious free time by centering their vacations on big experiences. Companies catering to that are benefiting. Now, I'm not heading to Boston for a WWE brawl or heading to Mexico for a Taylor Swift concert, although she just had a big concert in Mexico City. I think it was five nights. Are we tired of her yet? Should I do a Taylor free week? <laughs> I'm not bashing a woman who owns the world right now. Um, but I, I will say this, um, the bracelets thing, eh, you don't have to cash in on everything, but who am I to say that? Would I be doing it? It just feels like sometimes you take advantage of your fans a little bit too much. 
NVIDIA plans a big buyback of billions in stock. I own shares of NVIDIA. Chipmaker announced plans to buy back $25 billion. They've got the cash flow for it. They're expected to generate $34 billion in cash flow next year. Um, that's pretty interesting. A lot of people are like, why did you open more factories? Why did you do more research and development? Buybacks can be a key ingredient to stock market returns for investors. Apple's been doing it for 10 plus years, and you've seen how Apple's stock is still performing, even though they don't have a lot of growth. One. NVIDIA is aggressively growing in profits, enabling it to return so much money to stockholders. You may see other tech companies copy this business model. Um, at least I think you will. When I take a look at the data, data center revenues for NVIDIA, up 171%. Gaming up 21%, professional visualization down 20%. Auto was up 15%. Um, their earnings, if you put it on a, a leaf, on a, a ribbon, and you measure the ribbon, they've got some pretty fat margins in there. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. They're not selling semiconductors that are cheap. They're selling semiconductors that are expensive. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black. For more information about EP Wealth, visit robblack.com. That's robblack.com.